Well, it's not every day that we sit with a World Cup winning captain. It's not every day that we sit with a European champion. It's not every day that we sit with somebody who was so well acclaimed that they managed to win the FIFA World Player of the Year. The first time it was introduced to the world. And you know what? Seven-time Bundesliga champion. That is what we have right here in South Africa. Just landed. Boom! Over Tambo International made his first stop right here on Marawa TV. Lato Mateus, good to see you. Welcome. Thank you very much. You're excited to be back? I'm always uh, excited when I'm here in South Africa. Last time, 10 years ago, for five weeks, all the World Cup from the first to the last game. I was not only visiting the games, I was visiting your beautiful country. I was uh, in touch with the people who were living here. And it was a great experience for me and I'm happy to be back. I mean, I'll share a story that you once told me a while ago that you loved driving yourself and that's the crazy <laughs> thing. A whole captain of Germany then, a World Cup winner back in 1990, decides to take his driver, says, you know, go sleep, bring the car. I'll you went as far as Durban. <laughs> that's right, absolutely. This was, uh, was for me adventure too, not yeah. only the World Cup, uh, the time in South Africa because when you're a long time in a country like uh, me 10 years ago, you like to see something from the country. And I had from my uh, TV channel, I had a driver. He has to care about me, like yeah. uh, give me security, give yeah. me the right ways. I say, hey, jo Josef was his name, was a tall guy. Yeah. I say, Josef, you have three children at home. Why you have to come with me to Cape Town? Why you have to come with me to Durban? Yeah. You miss your family two days, three days. Stay with your family, give me the car. We shut up, we don't tell nothing to the TV the channel, nothing and you give me the car, you have time with your family, mm. and I can drive how I want. I can stop when I want, I can go to the lunch when I want, I can uh, live a little bit my life mm. to see South Africa. And this was a great deal for him, was a good deal for me, and uh, on the end we had a lot of fun. But weren't you scared though, because the perceptions, as you would know, you know, in Europe you were being told South Africa dangerous, South Africa crime, South Africa there's a war, South Africa, so many negative things were being said. But here you are, one of the world famous football players, brave enough to say, I want to drive 560 kilometers to Durban in my own car. Yes, it uh, was good, nice for me. I like to drive car and uh, sure, I, I, I had a night driving yeah. and uh, I didn't find a petrol station on the highway. <laughs> then I have to go out and sure, you read a lot of stories in the yeah. newspaper. Short time before was uh, some journalist uh, or some football manager was killed on the golf court and then and all the story I had in my brain. And then I was going out and I was thinking, wow, I hope I find soon a petrol station. Then I find a petrol station. It was very dark there and I don't know what is in mind of the people because you had all the stories in your brain but uh, everything was okay fantastic people was nice yeah. the, uh, people support me the, uh, people helped me and uh, World Cup was uh, really a sp some special tournament for me because uh, uh, it was not only the football it mm -hmm. was the same the lifestyle in South Africa and this was so nice for me yeah. and uh, for this I'm happy to be back and you, you come back at a very critical time because it's a 10-year celebration since yes. then it seems like it was yesterday though how would you summarize that world cup for you was it was different germany it was in the height of summer it was hot people were having beer it was a wonderful fun fest were up for the first time and in here you came to a little bit of a colder south africa i mean you used to colder conditions in germany but how would you summarize that experience the first african experience of hosting a world cup 
which was uh, something special for the continent uh, because uh, only World Cup in Africa till now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Africa, especially South Africa, show in this uh, time they can organize the World Cup. They had a great atmosphere in the stadium, and not only in the stadium, it's the same in the town. I was living here five weeks in uh, Joburg, traveled to Cape Town, couple, uh, traveled to Durban, and was watching all the games around. I think I saw 20, 22 games live in the stadium. Was walking a little bit from the TV, from the uh, from the TV studio, and uh, yeah, the people uh, celebrate this World Cup, mm -hmm. celebrate uh, and show. Uh, how is uh, how beautiful is South Africa and uh, the lifestyle of uh, in this especially in Johannesburg? I like it very much. We was going out. We uh, we we make friendship with the people. We had good conversation. It was a beautiful time for me. Yeah. When you backtrack slightly, because now when you start to talk about your career and you start to talk about how you made your name and how long you were able to play the game, because not too many people are able to retire at the age of 50, well, coming out of retirement and then retiring again. What was it that kept you going? Because sometimes it's a mentality issue. What about you? I, 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 why I was a good football player? Because I think I had passion for the sport. Yeah. I loved the sport and I like to be the best. When I was a child, I get this motivation to like to be the best. I had, I have an older brother, four years older, and I like to be better than him. And this was my first motivation to be better than somebody who is maybe stronger, who is maybe or who is older, yeah. who is taller. And this was always fighting to be better than another. And uh, this gave me the motivation. The same on the end to play uh, till yeah, 30, with 39 years uh, still uh, yeah. in the national team. That is crazy, though. But how difficult was it? When you make that decision, some people find it difficult to say, I give up. In boxing, George Foreman can't give up. He retires and he comes back because the passion is still there. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you had to fight that? Yeah. I had fun when I was playing uh, on the weekend in the full stadium with, uh, with my teammates. And uh, I never was thinking uh, with uh, yes, uh, uh, yes earlier or before you have to finish my career because uh, I had this passion in me and still today I love football. I'm very happy. I'm here uh, in South Africa now like an ambassador for the German football. Because those conversations are very important. Well, those are the conversations they were having about you when you started, when the Ubankis was able to give you an opportunity and say, step forward, you're the kind of young player that I want. And then you go and play something like 49 games. And everybody is amazed at just the ability that you have. How important was that just to be given that chance? Because in midfield, nobody could touch you. Yes, you ended up playing as a sweeper, but as a midfielder, greatest in the world. As I, I think I get this uh, in a young age from my uh, village club. Uh, yeah. The coach was supporting me. I, I feel I, 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 I'm not only talented, I am better than maybe than another. But I had to walk every day in the yeah. training session with the teammates. And uh, when I was alone, I was kicking all the time the, uh, the ball. And uh, I make exercise for myself. And uh, yes, I, I was going better and better. And uh, sure, when I get the chance to play in Bundesliga, this was a dream for me. And mm -hmm. I think for each young boy, it's a dream to play Bundesliga. We don't speak about national team. We yeah. don't speak about world play of the year. Bundesliga, this was uh, the step what I like to do. And then I find out in the Bundesliga, oh, not so difficult to be maybe better than another. And this was yeah. always a motivation. How I told you, when I was playing with three, four, five, six years old against my brother, I like to be better than my brother. Later, I like to be better than another Bundesliga player. And then when I was playing in the national team, I like to play, I like to be better than uh, another national players from another country. Yeah. That, that's amazing though, because when you talk about that, the competition, who would you say was your biggest rival? in the Bundesliga for the longest time? 
Uh, in the Bundesliga, sure, uh, was mostly, not one player, was mm -hmm. mostly the teams. And in this time, was not Bayern Munich so dominate the championship in Germany like in the last seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, sometimes the concurrence from Hamburg, then from Cologne, then from Werder Bremen. And this was always uh, big fights uh, with, uh, with, uh, between the teams. Richard Nachbar, you were able to play for them. How big a deal was that? Was that part of your, your wish as a kid to play for Borussia Mönchengladbach? Yeah, it was my favorite club. I had uh, all the posters in my uh, bedroom. Mm. I was sleeping with, uh, with a team from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Every night I yeah. was going to sleep and had the picture from Günter Netzer, a poster from Günter Netzer, from Jupp Heinkes, from Bertie Fuchs, from the big team from Borussia Mönchengladbach in the 70s. They won five times the German title, yeah. uh, won two times the UEFA Cup. Uh, they had players who won the World Cup with Germany in 1974. And I support this team from, uh, from the beginning of, uh, of, of my life. Yeah. I never was uh, supporting another team. This was uh, the team of my heart. This was a team what I loved very much. And then having to play for Bayern Munich, for example. Later. <laughs> <laughs> what was the feeling though? Because yes, it, it's starting to grow in stature. People oh. are wanting to play there. But your, your love is for Wichen Gladbach. But here you are now as a Bayern Munich player. Yeah, I start München Gladbach five years yeah. and then I have to make the next step and uh, the best step and the highest step what you have to do or what you can do in Germany, it's Bayern Munich. Yeah. Bayern Munich, it's the club who win the most titles, who are the best players, uh, who has the biggest pressure of the players and I like to win titles. It was maybe possible with München Gladbach to win maybe one title or mm. maybe two, but when you play for Bayern Munich in the right moment in the, with uh, good teammates, uh, with good coaches, then uh, you have the guarantee to make the, uh, win titles. And uh, I was making the step uh, from uh, Borussia München Gladbach to Bayern Munich in 1984. In the next three years I won three times the German, the German championship and I think this was the right step and yeah. the same to be uh, in a better position in the national team. When you play a Bayern Munich player, you have your teammates the same in the national team and this gives you, um, uh, give you more power and more confidence when you play with your teammates uh, from Bayern Munich, same in the national team. And yeah. when you are a Russia München Gladbach player, maybe you have one of your teammates in the, in the, in the, in the national team yeah. and not more. Well, I did say a lot, uh, when you talk about it and having to move outside of Germany and you got to play in Italy, how difficult is that for you in terms of adjustment all of a sudden? Or is it pretty much the same? Your mentality around football, do you treat it all the same? Um, sure, it was the next big step to go in a country where you don't speak the language. Yeah. We had borders in Europe. We didn't have social media. We was out from your, uh, from your comfort zone. Yeah? Comfort zone, yes, exactly. No family anymore, close to you, not your language. But I was ready because I had uh, eight years uh, professional football before. I was playing in two World Cups, two European Championship, and uh, this was for me the right time to to make the step to to the best league in the world in this time. This was a Serie A, mm -hmm. and uh, many clubs from Italy liked to sign a contract with me the years before. Naples was uh, in my apartment in Munich. Maradona sent them to, to tell the, to, and told them, hey, bring me Lotto Mateus to my team to Na Naples. Yeah. But uh, I was uh, not sure, 86, 87, I've, I, I feel more comfortable, 88. I was, 88, I was for myself sure I can do this step, mm. not in the years before. And Inter Milan was uh, was not uh, only a good club in this moment. It's a history club, a good story. And with Giovanni Trapattoni, they had a coach. Uh, how I, when I feel he want me, mm -hmm. and this was very important for me. The coach is fighting to get me in his team, and uh, then I make this step to Italy. And uh, I think this was uh, not only a good idea. This was one of my best ideas what I had ever to do it in this moment. But do you feel that your best football was played in Italy? as an individual? Yes, because I have to do again, I have to do, make my position again strong. Yeah. And uh, what I had in Bayern Munich, what I had before in München Gladbach. And uh, in Italy, I have to start not by zero, I had my name, mm -hmm. I had the coach behind me, but I have to show them I am the same, good for you team, good enough to improve 
the level of uh, of the of the team, and uh, this was uh, very important for me to have the coach behind me, and then it was working from mm. the first moment very well. We won in the first year immediately the, the Scudetto, Scudetto in Italy, and uh, yes, and this gives you confidence, and uh, the, not only the demons, the fans, everybody mm. support you, and uh, football was different in Italy than in Germany in this time, because mm. football in Italy was seven days per week, from Monday morning till Sunday evening, and then start again Monday morning. In Germany, it was not uh, like in Italy. In Germany, it was the day before the game and the day, day after the game, but in Italy, you was living football seven days, 24 hours, and uh, was the same. More pressure maybe than in Germany, but you played against the best players mm -hmm. in the world. Maratona was playing in Italy, the Dutch players, Kulit, Van Basten, Rijkaard was playing, AC Milan, Juventus had big international stars, AS Rom was a good team, mm -hmm. Sampdoria Genoa with Mancini and, uh, and, uh, and Viali. Mm -hmm. Very big competition, and uh, in this time was the Italian football dominate the European football like the mm -hmm. Premier League last season, the, the international competition. But then how does it feel with all of the big names that are in Italy? You stand out as the best player, not in Italy, so not in Germany, but in the world. Yeah, because a, there's a FIFA award coming out for the very first time, Lotte. I mean, the significance of that cannot be lost in history. No, it was a, a sure good feeling, but I have to work very hard every yeah. day. Yes, not only me, it's the same with my teammates, because uh, you have to make the results, and the result uh, you cannot do alone. Right. And uh, with Giovanni Trabatoni, we had a very good coach, experienced coach, and he know what the team has to do to win titles. And when you win titles with your team, you can maybe be one of the best players in the world uh, when it's the decision. And uh, sure, I was playing in Inter, I was playing for, uh, with the German national team in this time. We won the World Cup 1990, and uh, I think this was the main reason why I won the, the Golden Ball. You're a captain, you're winning a World Cup. Yes. You're leading, you're making big decisions, yeah. you're having problems with your boot, you can't take a penalty, you... I mean, different scenarios in different World Cups are presented to you. Yes. But because you're a leader, there's trust that is put down yeah. to you. Not too many people get to lift the World Cup. I know that you're a very, you're a very humble person, oh. but just that moment, you, when you see the pictures of you lifting that trophy mm -hmm. today, still, what does that say to you? Uh, it was the greatest moment in my career. Yeah. And not only the final, not only to win the World Cup, how we win the World Cup, not only on the field. We had yeah. a very good relationship between 22, 23 players, between the players and the coaching staff. And uh, this was uh, uh, a time in Italy, the six weeks mm -hmm. with the preparation before, I will never forget because uh, we understand each other, uh, everybody was giving his best to win this title. And not only the number one mm -hmm. till the number 11, the same the players who were sitting on the bench, they support us on the field. And we had a very good team spirit and I think this team spirit give us uh, on the end mm -hmm. uh, the World Cup. Uh, when you don't have a good st uh, team spirit, how I feel it four years before mm. in Mexico, uh, we was missing something. What we get four years later in uh, in um, in uh, Italy, and uh, I think uh, we had very good players. We had especially players who had uh, experience in Italy in the Serie A. It yeah. was not only myself who played in this time in Italy in the best uh, championship in the world. It was the same Andreas Bremer, Jürgen Klinsmann, Rudi Völler, Thomas Hessler, Jürgen Kohler. And I think all this experience, what we get from uh, the Serie A, we can give to the national team. Right. And uh, I think uh, this power, what we had in this time, uh, was, uh, was uh, so strong to, to not only to win the World Cup, we was really the best team during mm -hmm. the World Cup with all the results, with all the performance. And I think this uh, was for everybody who was included in the circle was, uh, was a great experience. And I think uh, for everybody was uh, this, what, uh, this highest what you can win mm -hmm. in the football business. The England game. England game, semi-final in Turin, penalty. Yeah, that was crazy. Game. England had a very good team. That was Gus Coyne, yeah. Stuart Pierce, Blatt, yeah. very good player, Lineker. Wow, very good team. I think it was the best uh, game yeah. in the 
in the World Cup because nobody was caring about the defense. Both li team liked to win mm. this game. And England was coming better and better in this tournament. They started not so great, but later uh, they performed very well. And uh, this was a 50-50 game. And uh, you know the end of the story. We penalty shot out. We won. This, uh, missed two penalties. And uh, we was going to the final. Chris Waddle. Yes. Missed. Missed, yes. And Stuart Pearce. Stuart Pearce missed. But especially the Chris Waddle uh, effect. So you, there's a very iconic picture yes. that is there where all the German players are celebrating and huddling together. Mm -hmm. And there's Lata Mateus consoling a Chris Waddle, almost to say, I know, I've been there myself. Don't take it so hard. How, how difficult was it for you to separate your real emotion, seeing your teammates behind you, celebrating and knowing the significance of that celebration and you having to comfort because I had a position. similar situation four years before in the yeah. German Cup final between Borussia München Gladbach and Bayern Munich I was missing the same one penalty and for the, in this moment I was recognized more what's happened with me four years before, uh, uh, before yeah. than uh, the happiness in this moment I feel with him how how he feel and uh, sure, uh, I cannot help him, but uh, I was very close to him because I know this feeling. Mm -hmm. And this is part of football too, not only celebration. But do you feel though that's a, a reflection of who you are as a human being? Yes, a successful football player, but there's a humanitarian side, there's a, a human side. I feel because I, I had this feeling four years uh, yeah. before. And uh, for this, I was, uh, feel so sorry for him yeah. to lose a game, an important game after penalty where they played very well and then he, he is missing the final penalty. Stuart Pierce was missing the same penalty uh, two shots before mm -hmm. but he missed the final penalty and uh, for this uh, it's, football is a team sport but yeah. when you shoot the penalties it's one against one yeah. and this is normally not the sport you have a lot of one against one but you play always 11 against 11 mm -hmm. when you make a mistake I can help you uh, I can get the ball back mm -hmm. or you make a mistake or the goalkeeper make a mistake you can score a goal not for the goalkeeper for your team yeah. but when you have the penalty shot out it's always one against one and then on the end I know the headlines on the newspaper the day after it's not England against Germany this was Glenn Wartle yeah. Wartle was missing the final penalty and uh, why he was and then it's his name in the headline. But like Roberto Baggio. Yeah, Roberto Baggio, yeah. uh, World Cup final 94 yeah. with Brazil. Yeah. 1984, Lothar Matthäus, penalty with, for Borussia Mönchengladbach, miss against Bayern Munich in the cup final. was not the final penalty, but I was moving to Bayern Munich and this was a story yeah. because uh, of 84. Yeah. That, this is a story and uh, I really had in this moment, I was very happy he missed it for my team yes. and for myself too. But in this moment, I was thinking the same about how he has to feel. Yeah, and for many years as well. And you know how passionate England is and how they've been wanting a World Cup since yeah. 1966, yeah. when last they did. It's almost, almost, but it's not happening. Still talking about England, though. I mentioned at the top your success in Europe, your success at the World Cup, Bundesliga titles. But it's about the Champions League that everybody talks about. And you've got to always go back to 1999 and think about Manchester United. Yeah. And you almost say, they should have kept him on, or you should have stayed on. It was just 10 minutes to go before the end of the game. They pull you out, 80th minute, you are leading. And yes. It's lost. Okay, this was, uh, I make the long story short. Yes. You know, I played always sweeper. You told us on the beginning, from the midfield, I was going back for the sweeper. And yeah. sweeper is a different job than a midfielder. Right. And in this game, after two years, I played the first time again in the midfield because they had a couple of changes. Beckham was coming in the midfield, in the center, was not playing on the wing. Scholes didn't play, right. and Keane didn't play yeah. for them. And then they have a different. Uh, St uh, starting Formation, in the game yeah. and uh, my coach told me Lothar you don't play sweeper today you go in the midfield you play against Beckham and from Beckham you can go in the offense I played very well but different runs different ways and hot temperature in Barcelona and after 75 80 minutes I feel tired right. and I told to the coach coach I feel tired maybe you like to change and yeah. for him not maybe like to change he feel tired I have to change him I mean we make this change and I go out mm. 
uh, Justin Fink was coming in the game. We played the same system like many, many games in the Bundesliga before. Yeah. I was going out, Justin Fink come in, Jerry Mises was going to my position, Fink is playing in the midfield. Everything was like in the Bundesliga, yeah. but with different result on the end. And uh, till today, we really don't know why we lost the game, because we was dominated the game yeah. 90 minutes, not 93 minutes, 90 minutes. We had a lot of chances to score the second goal. Oh, yeah. And we didn't do it, and then we get back. A very strong punch from uh, from Manchester United. Yeah. They scored two goals in the last two minutes, in the extra time. And uh, not only the players, everybody who supported Bayern Munich didn't understand why we lost this game. Till today we are talking about the game. And here we are still talking about the game because I mean it's it's, it's one of those that in a illustrious but, career but it, like but yours. But this is the same yeah. part of football. Yeah. It's not only Gloria. It's the same uh, this results, and you have to respect. Sure. And maybe from the results like this, you can learn a lot for the future. Bayern Munich two years later, without me, they won the Champions League in uh, in Milano against Valencia 2001. And maybe when they didn't lose this game, because many players who lost 1999. Uh, the Champions League final against Manchester was playing still two years later the final against Inter Milan right. and uh, this was a little bit opposite because Valencia was ahead 1-0 in the penalty shootout it was the same ahead two times yeah. but Bayern Munich come back and maybe with this experience from two years before yeah. they know what they have to do in this moment sure you need luck sure yeah. it's not only the power it's not only the quality uh, uh, we have to make a better defense 99 after with the, uh, after these two corner kicks for man united it was two corner kicks when they scored two goals we was not focused maybe we yeah. was too, too sure maybe it was everything too easy 90 minutes overconfidence yeah. yes yeah, yeah. absolutely and uh, then oh. then uh, you lose the game and uh, that, that's it and uh, you have to congratulate manchester yeah. united you have to congratulate beckham you didn't saw him 93 minutes you didn't saw him in the game, yeah, yeah. but he had the trophy after the game in the in the hand, take it in the in the in the, in the, in the sky and celebrate with the um, Man United fans. Unbelievable! Crazy, Crazy football. Yes. I mean, we, we touched very lightly on, um, on 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 Diego Maradona uh, because he's always spoken very fondly about you. The book, as you would know, that he spoke about you as being one of the most difficult people that he's ever played with, and. When you realize how great a football player he was, I mean, still now, people talk Pele, Diego Maradona, you've got the new generation of Ronaldo Messi that are there. You almost have those four players as the greatest mm -hmm. uh, that people always chat about. Did you ever feel extra pressure to do something extra special to make sure that an extra talented player like him is kept out of the game? Uh, I was uh, motivated to play against him. The first time yeah. I played uh, against Diego Maradona was uh, on the 24th March 1982, a friendly game between Argentina and, and Germany in Buenos Aires. This was three days after my 21st birthday, I remember very wow. well. And uh, sure, Diego was a star and I was a young player in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 70,000 people in Buenos Aires was only a friendly game, but yeah. he liked to show. And my coach told me, Lothar today, only you have to play against Maradona because he is uh, the best player mm. in their team and you have to control him. You are faster than him, you are stronger than him. Yeah? Take him out from the game. Mm. And uh, yes, this was my job. I was uh, not doing more. Later I had to, uh, I show the same my quality when I go in the offense, but in this game I have to do only to close Maradona. And uh, this job I was doing very well. Yeah. Maradona, a big star in the football, but in this 90 minutes you didn't saw him. And uh, for me it was always a pleasure when I had to play against uh, Diego, not only in the World Cup yeah. finals, the same we played with Inter Milan against Naples. This was always a pleasure for me to play against this player because he really was in this time mm. when I was playing end of the 80s, or middle end of the 80s, he was really the best player in the world. He was, uh, he was very fast, he had a good technique, he had good movements, mm -hmm. he had the, the, the feeling to give the right pass in the right, in, with the right speed in the right area. He was an excellent player. When we talk about exceptional players, maybe let's quickly touch on that. I mentioned the two. 
those who like a Messi will always like him. Those who like a Ronaldo will always like him. But we are living in a generation where the two of them are such great artists on the football field. Where, where do you sit with the Messi-Ronaldo debate? Okay, first, uh, really was doing a great job in the last 15 years, I think so, yeah. because Messi played his first, uh, first national game uh, 2005 in Hungary in Budapest, in the capital of Hungary, yes. against Hungary. He come in in the 75th minute, something like this, yes. and he played 45 seconds and he get a red card. This was a start in his uh, uh, national team career, yeah. because I was a coach of Hungary. I know this game very well. <laughs> and the referee was a German guy, Markus Merck. Uh, yes, okay, it's another story. But it's a what, good story. Yeah, but this is yeah. now 15 years ago. Yeah. Mer Me Messi start his national Career, national team career 2005 and what he was doing yeah. in this 15 years is for me amazing like Ronaldo yeah. too yes. but uh, different style yeah. Yeah. very important for the for, for, for their teams yeah. they make the difference they score beautiful goals they score a lot of goals two heroes yeah. but I prefer Messi because of his style to play okay. with his dribbling with his movement Ronaldo is more powerful yeah. great charm good header Good shoot, Messi very elegant, yeah. make dribblings, technically for me better than Ronaldo in yeah. another way. For sure. But I'm happy we have both, both on the field. Well, while you talk about that, the fact that Messi has stayed in the one team, Barcelona, in terms of his career, and Ronaldo has kind of challenged himself, won the Ballon d'Or when he was at Manchester United, uh, even before he went to Real Madrid and broke all of those records. How easy or difficult is it? You've moved, which in Gladbach we spoke about, you went to Inter, you came back to Bayern, etc. How, how difficult is it for a player to move and adjust and be the best? Move, adjust, be the best. Move, adjust, be the best, as Ronaldo has, as opposed to one that is... Ronaldo was, Ronaldo was going the stronger way because yeah. he has to, when he go from Manchester to Real Madrid, he has to show in Real Madrid with another stars who are playing in Real Madrid, he is the best. Yeah. Huh? And he showed them this. And then he was going in, in a moment from Real Madrid where he feel the, the, the club is not so behind him. The fans don't love him like Messi in Barcelona. Right. And he was uh, living to Juventus Turin. And Juventus, he show again, he can play the same in Serie A, where yeah. they can, maybe where they have the best defense. And he was scoring again his goals. Messi was always in his club, in his family, yeah. in his team. Yeah. Uh, Messi is Messi. and. Uh, who is playing in Barcelona, always Messi is the first and everybody who is coming to Barcelona like Dembélé, like uh, Griezmann now. Yes. Uh, when it's an option to give to Messi or to Griezmann, Messi will get always a ball from his teammates mm. because Messi is Messi. And uh, Ronaldo is Ronaldo, but when he was uh, changing the club, he has to show in the new clubs the same, his quality. Yeah. He has to make the relationship with the teammates, with yeah. the fans. And uh, Ronaldo get uh, support and love uh, more in Turin than in Madrid, uh, where he won three times or four times the Champions League yeah. title, was scoring so many goals, uh, important goals. He never get this love what Messi get in Barcelona. And maybe for this, he was leaving Real Madrid and is playing yeah. now for Juventus. Story. Yeah, makes makes a great deal of sense. While you talk about the modern football, what do you make of VAR? When uh, when it's working like uh, during the World Cup 2018 in yeah. Russia, I am fan of this war because it was no big discussion, only clean decision. We in Germany have problems. Too many times it's coming the war in the in the decision, mm -hmm. and uh, first decision has to be uh, has to make the referee, and then when it's really completely wrong from the referee because he can. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's only a man who has uh, the same problems, who make mistakes. When he make a mistake, a clean mistake, then has to come the bar in the, in the, in mm -hmm. the decision. But should it be there all the time? We see in other leagues, whether it's EPL, a little hand is out, you're offside, uh, a ball bounces the other side. Do you believe that it should be like that? Should it Can, not cannot favor be because more? you have to stop the same in the right moment when the ball is leaving your, uh, yeah, yeah. your, your, your foot. Your foot. Yeah. Yes, then you can stop in the right moment. You know exactly the right moment, and this is mm. millimeters, centimeters. And sure, this is this what I say. Why we have to do it? Sure, when you have twenty centimeter offside, 
on the line, then it's offside. Right. Then you have to believe the VAR, then you have to believe the line who, who you can see in the DV, and uh, then you have to annulate the door, uh, the goal. And uh, yes, you have this decision, but uh, the, the VAR make not the football 100% clean. Yeah. Would you favor goal line technology though? That is better than what VAR is offering? Uh, but uh, I, I am not in this committee to, yeah. to make decisions. But, but just from a, I mean, you, you sit in the, in the box, you commentate, you give opinions of the touchline, yeah. and you're a former player. Well, what do you think works for football now? VAR, touchline? Goal line technology? Uh, yeah, goal line technology, sure. Yeah. This is uh, 100%. We need it. Sure. This is 100%. But all the other things. Here it's hand. Uh, I can, say, uh, I can uh, involve the VAR when it's, uh, when, it's, uh, for, when it's a handball outside from the box uh, before the goal. Then I can decide for hand. Mm -hmm. But when it's a foul outside, then I cannot do it. This is uh, not clean for me. They mm -hmm. have uh, too many ways where they can use it or they don't use it. And uh, they have to make it more clean for themselves mm -hmm. and for the players and especially for the fans. And when the VAR is included, then I like to see it on the screen mm -hmm. in the stadium too for the fans. Because yeah. the fans have to know why the referee uh, yeah. choose the VAR and give the goal or give the penalty or don't give the penalty. I think this is the most important thing, what you have to do for the fans in the stadium. Mm. What we can see at home on the television, the fan has to see it on the screen. Makes sense. Do you know what a handball is? Because I'm confused. Sometimes I, it hits the hand you're facing the other way, they'll give a handball. Sometimes it hits, they say no, he was trying to... It's, it's too many things, yeah, I, whereas I, before I, it hits the hand. And I it's have a... many times different mind than the referees because I was <laughs> yeah. a football player and I know what is nature and unnature movement. Right. And uh, I think this is important. It's a nature movement, it's an unnature movement. Movement like this, the hand has nothing to do here. When you get the ball here, yeah. this is not. Yeah? But w when you go a fight and uh, you give a cross ball and your hand is here, you cannot make always the hand be uh, behind the back. This mm -hmm. is not possible. Mm -hmm. I think the unnature and the nature hand movements, uh, it's important to, to right. make this whistle or don't make the whistle. One of the biggest problems worldwide, especially in Europe, I don't know what your opinion is, racism in football. How do we try and stop it? In a similar way, when you looked at Hoffenheim playing against Bayern over the weekend, there were banners, but the banners yes, had nothing banners, to do with racism. Yes, swear words directed obviously at a, at a I, I at make a it short, we don't need these things in the, in the football stadium, yeah. we don't need it generally, we don't need it. Yeah. Uh, we have to be with each other, for each other, not against each other. But That's how do we solve it though? The, everyone says FIFA's not yeah, doing but, enough but and we, so on, how do we? How uh, do they, we? They, they do something, but yeah. uh, maybe they can do more, uh, you can do always something more, but nobody accept or respect uh, this uh, this, uh, these things in the football stadium right. outside. The same on the street. Why we have to be against each other? Sure. Yeah, we have to respect each other. This is the most important. Doesn't matter you're black or white. Mm -hmm. or I am a little bit red today, <laughs> because I was two days in the sun. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we have to help each other and we have to support each other. And the most thing is respect. Respect. Mm -hmm. I respect your mind. You respect my mind. Mm -hmm. You respect my uh, skin color. I respect your skin color. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I travel around the world. I have every were friends from many, many different countries, from with many, many different languages. But I am happy to be still today part of football and have all this experience around the world what I get in the last 40 years. There's this Borussia and there's that Borussia. The battle of the Borussias. This Borussia always on fire. There's power, there's accuracy, there's the finish! That Borussia, highly explosive. Bang! Brilliant stuff! Better not put them together. But hey, why not? Let's just see what happens. It's just blowing the Bundesliga away! Borussia Mönchengladbach versus Borussia Dortmund. But what we don't know, what you don't know, what I don't know, is who's going to be lifting that Bundesliga title come the end of the season. It is such a tight race. It is beautiful for the fans and the rest of the world. I know you're going to be there over the weekend. Just quickly tell us which game are you going to be doing this weekend? Uh, this weekend I am in 
München Gladbach, oh. bei ex club Borussia München Gladbach is playing against Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. Two clubs has a good chance to win the German uh, Championship title with Bayern Munich and with uh, RB Leipzig. Yeah. We have a big competition this year for the for the championship. But on the end, I have this feeling Bayern Munich will win again because they uh, have good uh, presentation in the last games. Hoffenheim, they won 6-0 yeah. three days before. You remember maybe the game in Chelsea, 3-0. Three. And uh, they are, have really good players. They have a very good coach. And uh, the atmosphere in the club, it's amazing now. It's really everything, it's quiet. Uh, everybody is focused for the, for, for the game, uh, for, for the competition. And uh, I think Bayern Munich will do it again. Yeah. But what is nice, we have this year really strong competition with four teams yes. to win the German, the German title. Should the coach stay at Bayern, by the way? I hope so, I hope so. I know him very well. He was yeah. playing with me end of the 80s by Bayern Munich, three years. And um, yes, I have uh, still friendship with him, Good. with his family. And he's a very nice guy. He is not talking too much, yeah. but he's talking clean. He has a good relationship with the player, uh, especially with the player who are unhappy and sitting on the bench. And he's talking open with them, what he is missing from them, or why he decide not against him so, uh, for another player. Right. And uh, for this, the atmosphere is very good by Bayern Munich, and uh, good atmosphere is always the base mm. f to win titles. Holland, what do you make of him? Holland, Holland. Yeah. yeah. Borussia Dortmund, great striker. He was scoring a lot of goals for uh, Red Bull Salzburg. Okay, yeah. Red Bull Salzburg, only a story on the side. Yeah. I was coaching Red Bull Salzburg 2006, and you know who was my assistant coach? Hansi Flick. Ah. Okay, you didn't know it? Okay. Now you know it. So at least I, I, was, believe, I yes. was believing him 2006 to be a good coach. Yeah, yeah. Because I know him like a player and then he was coming with me to, Leip uh, to Salzburg yeah. like a coach. And uh, yes, that, uh, this is a story about Hansi Flick and we have really a very, very good relationship. And Haaland is a very good player, wow. good striker, strong guy with 19 years, very smart. He is yeah. not flying somewhere. He's really relaxed. He yeah. has his father behind him. He was the same ex-player by Manchester United. He know the business and he helped him a lot. And uh, I think he really can be the next Lewandowski for the Bundesliga. Because yeah. I'm a big fan of Lewandowski. <laughs> for me, he's the best number nine in the world. Oh. I know Benzema, I know Suarez. Messi is not a number nine. Ronaldo is not a number nine. Lewandowski is for me in the last year the best number nine. And he is scoring every year his 25, 30 goals in the Bundesliga for Bayern Munich. And he is somebody who can make the same like Messi and Ronaldo the difference on the highest level. And Haaland will do it too. He make it now. Yeah. He score in the first seven games, I think, nine goals, nine goals yeah. for for Borussia Dortmund. And the way how he scored the goals is amazing. Especially with the goals against Paris Saint Germain. Yeah, yeah. The second goal, 19 years old. He's uh, new in this club, two months. But the people in Dortmund support him. Yeah. They love him. And this is the same important for a young player, generally for each player, but especially for a young player to get this support. 80,000 people every week support this 19 years old guy and he's now after two months the hero in Borussia Dortmund and Borussia Dortmund has a lot of very good players, yeah. national players, Sancho, national player from England, but this guy catched the heart of the people immediately. Oh, my favorite player is right here sitting next to me. Lato Mateus, thank you so much, not only for being the brilliant football player that you've been, but for being a beautiful person in your heart and just having a love for football, love for people. And it's such an honor to have you on Marawa TV. Keep blessing all of us. Bundesliga has got a great partner and a great partnership with you. Keep serving. Welcome to Africa. Welcome to South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to all see you. Best. Nice to see you. Thank you so much.
All right, thank you so much for being part of the Marawa TV family. Don't forget as well, do subscribe. Get on the little bell button so that you get your notifications. And also, yeah, thumbs up, like us. Tell us as well in the comment section who you would like to see coming on to the Thursday night live show or who you'd like us to go and track down and have a conversation with so that we give you all the latest information as and when it happens. It's life of a sports person.